recent article is suggesting that Medicare eligible employees of large employers may be forced out of their health insurance plans. And here to talk with me about that is Jay O, author of Maximize Your Medicare. Jay, welcome. Thanks for having me, Bob. Uh, a pleasure. So um, the headline and this article uh, is a bit um, frightening in a way to think that folks who are Medicare eligible employees may be forced out of their employer provided health insurance plans. So the background here is the Inflation Reduction Act will be in full flight in 2025. Most notably, there's going to be a $2,000 a year hard cap for out-of-pocket expenses for prescription drug benefits, which is going to be the provider of tremendous relief, financial relief to many. That said, what happens is if you are the employee of an employer-sponsored plan, that health insurance plan needs to meet the Medicare standard, which is called creditable coverage. Well, now that standard has just gotten much tougher to meet in 2025. So the question is going to be whether or not employer-sponsored plans are going to adopt pre prescription drug benefits which meet this minimum standard. If they do not, and an employee stays with the employer-sponsored plan, they would be subject to the Part D late enrollment penalty, one which once levied is permanent. Complicated, very complicated, Bob. Uh, it is complicated. Uh, so first, uh, remind our viewers what the late enrollment penalty is and how much. The Part D late enrollment penalty for those new to Medicare is you need to have prescription drug benefits without interruption. That interruption can be up to 63 days, but not exceed that. From there, you would be penalized 1% per month of the national average, which is recalculated. And then that, again, that penalty never expires. So uh, as folks are trying to get their arms around this, if someone is an employee of a large employer that's offered employee health insurance and they don't have creditable coverage, what do you recommend that they do? Well, I think two things. The first one is that, and you framed it perfectly, which is that what are they to do? <laughs> which is if you're a full-time employee at a large employer, if you're the spouse who is older than 65 or medic otherwise Medicare eligible, you would want to ask your HR department whether or not next year's plan or this plan, the prescription drug benefits, is Medicare creditable coverage. If it does not, if it is not, for example, you do need to think because it is related to our other conversations, Bob, which we have discussed the idea that it has never been my I thought that you would just blindly rely on your large employer plan, that you would actually check to make sure that is the most fitting combination of price and access to health care services that's efficient for your household. So um, to get into the weeds a little bit more, if you're Medicare eligible, you're likely to be on Part A and maybe not Part B or Part D. Um, is the recommendation perhaps then that you would uh, enroll in Part B and Part D and also and maybe Medigap and also or consider as an alternative a Medicare Advantage plan with prescription drug coverage? Those are all in play, Bob, is the candid reality. And for me today or this conversation we're having today is just a very specific example of the general point, which is that it is comforting, it is easy to just consider the status quo and just accept your employer-sponsored plan as the best. And it is certainly comfortable. That said, Medicare has certain 
very specific rules, and it just so happens that 2025, those rules are going to change, which is common to our theme, which is why we're going to be probably be talking over time, hopefully, if you'll be good enough to have me. So it, you mentioned spouses before. It strikes me that if you're the employee and your spouse is on your plan, uh, there could be a big surprise be coming because I don't know if any large employer's uh, HR department, employee benefit department, is reaching out to folks saying, hey, it's time for you to reevaluate your health insurance because there could be a late enrollment penalty for your spouse who's on your family plan. And this is the difficult thing is that HR people get my sympathy in the sense that they've got so many different topics to manage, 401k, other benefits, etc. That they're going to get, you'll very likely get a notice in the mail, possibly from the carrier, possibly from the employer. But it is whether or not that person, that party will say, by the way, your spouse might be affected is an entirely different matter. One thing I do want to point out, Bob, and I know pretty complicated today, is that I would suspect that most large employers are going to adopt a prescription drug benefits package, which does meet credible coverage. The issue is then the price, meaning that, as many people know, the large employers contribute a very large percentage of the overall cost of the plan, it, the entire package, the entire plan. The issue is whether or not or how the large employers are going to deal with it because now they're going to have to have a plan to satisfy the full-time employee group and also manage the almost certainly higher overall cost of the overall plan. Yeah. So do you foresee this happening, let's say for sake of argument, an employer is paying 75% of the uh, in health insurance premium that that might uh, go down to say 65 or 60% and that the employer employee will end up picking up a greater percentage of the health insurance premium. So now we are, you, you've unlocked a whole nother set of, of uh, topics, which is that employers are required to pay X percent of the total percentage under the ACA. And so now we again, what you'll end up having is then let's just say the large employer meets that standard. The cost then would be borne by the employee and their spouse and spouse in the, in our example. And again, we ripple back. we the feedback loop is back to our original point, which is simply that just blindly believing an employer sponsored plan can mean you using excess money for benefits you don't need or or worse benefits than what you require or would like to access and in many cases both i've seen that even prior to today and going into 2025 certainly expect to see more of that yeah. So one last question. I, I'm anticipating that the juggling act is you're an employee, you're getting your open enrollment uh, information here, and you might be your spouse or you might be getting your Medicare uh, open enrollment uh, information here. And you've got a lot of comparing and contrasting to do. And, uh, and it's not an easy calculation, I, I'm guessing. It's not going to be an easy calculation. The reality is, is for people where one spouse requires substantial amounts of healthcare services that it's actually n has never been easy. It's been overlooked in many cases, I'm certain. This is going to make it more complicated. And in either case, whether or not the employer chooses to pass on the cost to the employee or whether or not the prescription drug benefits don't meet the creditable coverage standard. In either instance, 
certainly a little bit more complicated going into 2025. Yeah, well, I think having spoken to you about this, uh, I think one thing is certain is the need to talk to a financial professional like yourself or others who are uh, knowledgeable about this is uh, more than necessary given the stakes are so high. The stakes are high, Bob, but simply because people are not aware of the topic and the scope and scale of the amounts of money involved to people, that it's thousands of dollars can be the difference a year. And then on top of that, it's also the uncertainty. As many people know, health insurance, healthcare services, mysterious. And so as a result, having both of those resolved can be very valuable. Yeah. Well, uh, once again, Jay, you've helped us uh, explain a complicated topic and made it uh, less complicated. So thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom as always. It's been my privilege, Bob. Thanks for having me.